Well, skyrocketing food and oil prices have made times difficult, especially for those at the helm of the government, organizations, and businesses. These leaders are challenged to come up with the means to manage the economic crisis as well as other dilemmas that arise in their day-to-day -day affairs. Faced with these challenges, leaders share their expertise and experience. In a conference this month, key Filipino leaders and special guest, former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, will give lectures aimed at strengthening leadership in times of crisis. And joining us today is one of the conference's keynote speakers, James Lafferty. He's the president and general manager of Procter & Gamble Philippines. Good morning, sir. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Thank you, Ricky. Well, I guess this conference is going to talk about uh, leadership in times of crisis from many, many different points of view. Yes. And, and uh, obviously, you're going to be there talking about it from the point of view of a, of a CEO of a large company. Um, what... Uh, I, 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 it's pretty easy to imagine that, that uh, times are pretty difficult, margins getting squeezed, w sales may not be growing as much as, as everybody wants, but how does a company like Procter & Gamble deal with stuff like that? I think what we're seeing recently with the inflation driven by oil and other raw materials is unprecedented in the last 25 years. And that's impacting all the way down to the consumer's purchasing ability and affecting all of the companies that, uh, that are selling to the end consumer. Are you seeing changes in consumer behavior? Are they looking now, are they becoming more price conscious? Are they buying more substitute goods? Yes, they're more price conscious, but they're also more value conscious. They're trying to spend their money wisely and looking at every choice that they make. Am I, am I spending every centavo effectively and getting the most from my money? So it's not purely price, but it's the equation of performance, the product, and price. And has there, have you noticed a significant shift? I mean, if that's the attitude now, do you notice a significant shift in their, in their purchase patterns? Yes, we're seeing it on a month-on-month -month basis as we look at different markets shifting to what we would call the best value products in those given categories. With a company like Procter & Gamble, you've got many products along different categories. I would, I would assume that uh, regardless of what category, you've got a product. Yes, and I think the, the, what if you look in history uh, during these types of recessionary times, there are, there are companies that actually grow their business through recessions. Some examples of that is Toyota and uh, as well Procter & Gamble, where we have consistently built the business through the tough times. One of the reasons is, is what is the foundation of that company? And our foundation is serving consumers, coming with the best value products. And so in a recessionary time when people are looking closely at what they spend, we actually believe that our products are well poised to bring the best value to consumers. But how is that affecting, um, I mean, fuel prices must be affecting margins. I, I won't ask you about the little number, uh, the, the details of the numbers, but, but margins are getting squeezed Absolutely. everywhere. Um, Absolutely. Uh, does, do you go back to the, to the home office and say, look guys, because of what's going on, uh, revenues could grow this much, but you, you can't expect the net income to grow that much. I mean, how does that, how does that play back, back at home? You know, everyone has, it depends on what your principles are, and everyone has a, a set of tools that they can pick from. You can raise prices, uh, you can cost save on what we would call non-value added costs, which are costs that I can't look at a consumer and say you should pay for. The other thing that you can do is you can actually start to look at the performance of your product into what we would call dilute that performance. And we're very, very clear on what we're going to be doing. Uh, the first thing that we do is we take the non-value added costs out of the system. Um, when I go to Singapore, I don't stay in a hotel, I stay on someone's couch. Mm. <laughs> because I can't look at a consumer, if I can look a consumer in the eye and say, I want you to pay for this and she agrees, it's a great cost. But if I look at her and I say, I'm going to a business trip, I'm going to fly first class and I'm going to stay in a top hotel, I think she's going to tell me I'm not paying for it. Mm. Somebody has to pay for it, so we don't do it. We take all of those costs out of the system. But, but one thing that we've done, and again, I'm proud of our principles, we've made a decision. We will not touch, for example, in laundry, the performance of any of our products. I could go and dilute and take an ingredient out here and there and hope no one would be concerned with that. I won't do it because it doesn't serve the consumers the performance that they're expecting, the suds level that they're, that they're expecting. You know, our products will remain through this. They will remain the high quality that we promise people. Uh, despite the temptation to maybe dilute it just a little, maybe the consumer won't notice. I mean, there must be that temptation at yeah, times. That's a dangerous, yeah. slippery slope to get on. And, and I guess you've got the brand to, to, to watch out for, right? Right. And that's when you, when you have brands like Tide, like Ariel, like Downey, 
you know, these are institutions that were here before I was born and they're going to be here after I'm gone. You, you have to treat these as the jewel they are. You don't, you don't take those type of tactical moves. Now, do you take a hit over the short term when something like that happens? I mean, you're in a very competitive market and your, your position is we're going to keep the product quality the same. Uh, you know, some, some other guy is going to come in and do exactly what you say you're not going to do. Well, well, maybe we can dilute this a little bit and save a little bit on the cost. Maybe the consumer won't notice. Right. And, and maybe over the short term, uh, they can drop their prices and, and maybe for the short term they'll see some kind of benefit. But uh, you see that happening with, with other competitors and, and uh, is there a temptation? I mean, you guys just, what, ride it out? You can't see it and, and you have to serve both the short term needs of the shareholders and the long term needs. And um, you know, we may take some hits. We may have to build on other businesses. The the commodity pressure hits different businesses in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have some businesses that are majorly hit, like laundry, where oil impacts raw materials, the plastic that it's packaged in, and the delivery, gasoline. Yeah. There are other businesses where there's less of an impact. You try to offset, you try to manage the portfolio. That's the beauty of having a broad range of brands in a broad range of categories is that the impacts of this type of inflation varies by business to business. And we manage through and I can look at a shareholder and say, we may have some impacts for a quarter or for a month, but over the long term, we're making the right decisions to ensure the long term health of this business. Do you ever get pressured by, I mean, you know, uh, large listed companies uh, with a lot of shareholders. I mean, the culture today is like you got to make money every quarter. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's so sure. it's so short term in outlook, especially when you're talking to small shareholders. Uh, there must be some pressure on the company to have to explain that no, we're, we're not gonna we'll take the hit short term because in the long term it's gonna be better for us. Does it make it harder to deal with shareholders? Absolutely, but again, it, the beauty of P&G is the breadth of the portfolio, geographically and in the number of categories that we're in. And because of that, we've been very consistent in delivering our earnings, even though individual businesses may feel the brunt of this more than others, through the portfolio and the balance, uh, you're able to write it out. The companies that are much more focused, that have a very limited portfolio in a very limited geographic area, they're the ones at risk. When, when such an inflationary environment hits. What about internally? I mean, uh, when you have a situation where you can see what's happening in the U.S. and the economy is slowing down, uh, in the finance uh, sector where, where I come from in particular, you're seeing layoffs. I mean, does, does morale get hit internally and how do you manage something like that? It does, but again, you rally people to a challenge. I mean, these are the, these are the moments that you measure the value of an organization, the value of individuals, and what their principles are. It's easy to say things when times are easy. And it's easy to say, you know, we're behind this, we're going to stick to this goal. But the real measure, the true measure, is how people perform under pressure. I relish these moments, and I think my organization relishes these moments. There's a moment of concern and worry, but then you stand up and you say, these are the moments that we live for. This is when we, they define us. How will we deliver in this tough situation? And so, how would you define sort of, uh, in, in broad terms, how the company is going through tough times that will probably continue at least throughout uh, the rest of the year? You seem to be saying that we're going we're gonna to stick to our guns, we're going to keep the quality Absolutely. the same. Uh, we hope that the consumer will understand that and we, we believe they will. Uh, but, but it seems to me that, that uh, the company, based on what you're saying, is, is not going to take any sort of uh, short-term knee-jerk reactions. There will be no knee-jerk reactions from Procter & Gamble on our brands. Not whatsoever. We will stick to the fundamentals of what works, which is serving consumer needs and taking the costs out of the system that don't bring any value to our consumers. Where do you see, where do you have to do the most hand-holding? Is it with shareholders? Is it with customers? Is it with suppliers? With employees? Uh -oh. as, as, a, as a leader of an organization? The, the hands are pretty evenly spread across all those groups, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so you got to hold everybody. Yes, hand. absolutely. I hope you haven't preempted what you were saying for the, at the conference. Not at all, not at all. So I still have plenty of good stories to tell when I'm there with, uh, with former candidate Giuliani. Okay, so uh, you've got all these guys coming in and they're going to be talking about dealing with crisis from many, many different points of view. Yeah, it looks very interesting. All right, well, we look forward to that. Uh, Mr. James Lafferty, CEO of Procter & Gamble Philippines, a pleasure to have you on the program. Hope we can have more of these conversations. Okay, salamat, Ricky. Thank you very much, sir.
And before we go, here's a look at exclusive stories you'll find only on abs-cbnnews.com. If push comes to shove, Special Prosecutor Dennis Villagnasio vows to go to the Supreme Court and inform the justices of the underhanded tactics aimed at forcing him to resign from his post. Social Welfare Secretary Esperanza Cabral, meantime, is ready to lose her job over her support for the reproductive health care bill. And Baguio City residents are calling for the immediate resolution of the city's garbage problem, with the former cleanest and greenest city now facing the prospect of being called the country's, the country's dirtiest. You can find the details on these stories and other exclusives and special reports on abscbnnews.com. And that's your news at 8. Join us again same time tomorrow. I'm Ricky Karandang. Email us at anc.news8 at gmail.com. You can also text us at 0926-667-4541 or 0927-414-4777. Thanks for watching. Mornings at ANC is next.